Hey guys, John Knudsen here with Bird Dog. Oh, today we're just going to go over real briefly logging into our devices. Today we're going to use a Bird Dog Mini. But we're going to log into the device. I'm going to show you some general stuff. We're going to cover the dashboard and we're going to cover the configuration and we're going to cover the networking information. So if you need that information, that's what we're covering here. In other videos, we're going to talk about settings for video input, output, uh, encode, decode, all that good stuff because they all change per device. But this, uh, this little spiel is kind of all the same. And so we want to give you a brief overview as to how uh, this is done and make this information available for you. To find your Bird Dog Mini or your Bird Dog in general, when you plug it in to power, uh, we advise that you plug it into the power brick that it comes with and then plug in the Ethernet port to your computer and to the Bird Dog. Um, this is going to make the bird dog go into default mode, which means that its static IP address will be 192.168.100.100. Now you need to set your computer to a address that is on the 100 subnet, which means it needs to say 192.168.100. something. So 20 or 25 or 30 or whatever you choose. Uh, don't go over 200 or 250 because that's kind of the range that you get with networking. And if you're not super familiar with it, just keep it simple. So 192.168.100.20. Uh, and then in a web browser, here I'm using Chrome, but in a web browser, you just type in then the address for the bird dog. Once it's fully booted up, type in 192.168.100.100. Uh, in the top web browser, which is usually uh, you know right below the tabs of the you know in Chrome or in Explorer or whatever. But uh, just type in, in the address field, 192.168.100.100, and hit enter. And you're going to come to a screen that looks like this. And it will say Bird Dog Studio or Mini or P200 or whatever you have. And uh, the password, the default password, is just Bird Dog. All one word, all lowercase. So we just type that in, hit OK or hit enter. And it's going to take us to the dashboard screen. So on the dashboard, you are given a glimpse of all of the important uh, address items that your bird dog has set. So this is version 3.0 beta 9. Uh, it's a great version of the, the firmware. It's going to be out for the studio real soon. It's out for the mini right now on a Facebook page it's called Bird Dog User Group. Uh, you can go there and download it for free update your uh, bird dog mini again the studio will be posted soon and and for the other devices as well and all of these features will then be available to you so on this screen we're just given the bird dog name and that is the name that shows up in the programs like central light or vmix or uh, tricaster or that sort of thing so this bird dog name is just bird dog dash and then the last five characters of the serial number which is over here so the serial number, yada, 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 ACBD1. Well, that's the name of the bird dog by default, bird dog dash ACBD1. That's mine, uh, my particular one. Yours is going to be different. But the beautiful thing is that if you copy this and put that in the address bar and put dot local, you will be able to get to the unit as well. And so if you want to remember all the IP addresses or if you want to remember the serial numbers, this is two quick ways to get to this web interface to work on and upgrade each of the individual units. So the name right now is bird dash, bird dog dash AC BD1. Now it's important that bird dogs stay in the name and we really recommend that you keep them pretty similar to this because uh, in a couple of our programs, comms in particular, Comms looks for the devices with bird dog in the name. And so uh, if it says bird dog dash ACBD1, it's going to come up in comms as an option. We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later and uh, a lot more in depth in another video. So there's the bird dog name and the serial numbers over here. Right now, the NDI connection that's being used is decode. It's decoding a 1080p picture. Uh, that's actually coming off of a graphics card on my primary PC. It's a Windows 10 computer. And there is no encode uh, mode in the input. So it will say no input, but it will say you're decoding a 1080p signal. The network connection method is DHCP. And in general, if you don't know what that is, the uh, all networks 
hand out IP addresses. And so a DHCP does that for you. It basically is an address system that hands each network device an address, a unique address, so that the device can then communicate on the network with other devices and potentially the internet. So the address that mine has been assigned, instead of 192.168.100.100, you can see that the DHCP has issued it 77.61, and that's just a random number that my system here in my office has issued because my network is 192.168.77. whatever. And so that's the subnet that my uh, network runs on. And the way that you can tell that is by the mask, by the subnet mask, which is 255, 255, 255, 0. 255 means that this number in the sequence has to be identical to the other network devices on the network in order for this mini to talk to those devices. So 255, it has to have 192. 255, it has to have 168. 255, it has to have 77.0. That's a wild card, which means that it can talk to anybody in the 77 group. So anything from 1 to 256 on uh, in this category right here. So that's a crash course. If you don't know much about networking, the crash course in how networking works. And we'll get into that a little bit more in the next tab. So here's my IP address. And here is the, the mask. Now the DHCP tells the unit all this information on its own. And so this is just populated by my network. And then lastly, uh, the firmware version that you are currently running is listed here. And so if you contact support, we're going to say what version are you working with? And you can find that out right here. Now I've upgraded to beta nine, which is a public beta mini 3.0. It's available on Facebook right now under the bird dog user group. Go ahead and download it, get all these cool features that I'm about to show you. The uh, two buttons, the two options that we have here are reboot device. Now, sometimes these devices are uh, installed in far off places on your network or in ceilings or whatever. And so you don't want to climb up there and pull the power on it, or you don't want to go to the headroom and disconnect the ethernet cable that's connecting this to the network. And so we give you the option to soft reboot the device right here, and that will do a full reboot, um, you know, from start to finish. So that's a great option. If you install firmware and you want to reboot, make sure everything is as it's supposed to be. Or if you set a static IP address, which we'll talk about next, and you want to reboot the device, just make sure, you know, the old IT joke, have you tried turning it off and on again? That is actually a real thing. Uh, we ask that quite often uh, as IT guys. And so reboot your device, that's a handy button. This restart video uh, button is also going to be super handy for you. Because sometimes when we're setting up our NDI networks and we turn on devices and we set manual settings and, and we, we kind of get into the nitty gritty of things, the NDI signal is just blank or black or empty. And if you hit restart video, that will ensure that the unit is setting up as you have, uh, you know, intended it to be. And it'll get it kind of good to go uh, in terms of the NDI signal. So restarting your video, if you're not getting anything in your TriCast or vMix or in Studio Monitor or whatever you're using, restart video is a handy tool just to be sure as a frontline defense, hey, hit restart video and see if the NDI signal comes back. All right, moving along. The next tab is network. And this is where we tell the device how we want it to behave on our network. Now we've already talked about DHCP. This is that service that just kind of my network automatically hands out. I've got a unit that acts as a DHCP server and it keeps a table of all the devices on my network. And it tells uh, it tells all the other devices on the network who is who, all right? But if you are setting up an isolated network or if you're just turning on a network switch and you're plugging things into it and you're not hooking it up to internet and you're not hooking it up to a big company, it's just on its own, then we need to set static IP addresses. Now, the fallback static IP address is 192.168.100.100 and that can be changed in DHCP mode but we strongly recommend you don't. We recommend that you just leave it as is because it makes troubleshooting so much better in the future if you ever need it. But we can click on static which then locks these options and now we can go in here and we can change it to whatever address that we want. Now if you're setting up your own network the easiest thing to do is just to set up a 192 
168100.network, okay? So leave the mask, 255-255-2550. Leave the 192.168.100 and then change this number to something else. So pick anything from 1 to 250 and uh, make it simple. Also write it down. Write down which device gets which address. And then this bottom number should either contain nothing or it should contain your IP address on your computer. Now, if you did what I told you to do at the beginning, when we set up, we plug the computer in directly to the mini and you need to set up a static IP address, this number should probably be your computer's IP. It doesn't have to be, but it kind of makes it simple, whereas the gateway is going to be what this unit looks at to find um, you know, the address table and that sort of thing. So the gateway needs to be 192.168.100 dot, you know, in this example, I think I said 20. And so you would set it to whatever your computer's IP address is. So this should then say 192.168.100 dot, whatever you choose, this should say 255.255.255.0 and this should be 192.168.100 dot 20 or whatever you've chosen for your computer. The, um, the, you would hit apply and then this screen is going to lose its connection because it has then the IP address has changed and the unit has rebooted. So now we need to go to our address field on our web browser and we need to punch in the new IP address for the bird dog. So 192.168.100 dot whatever you picked and hit enter and that will bring up the dashboard. Well, it'll bring up the password page actually, but it will bring up the dashboard again and you can get back into editing and uh, you know customizing this for your network. Now that only applies if you need to set a static IP address. Some of you will have a DHCP, some of you will need to set this up. And whether you know a lot about networks or you don't, maybe you're a network administrator or maybe you're doing this for yourself or for a small organization, we can get you going and we can help you understand kind of how it all works uh, in, in general. But the way that networks are designed these days, there are uh, hundreds of configurations. And so uh, do your best to bring in your IT team. Um, the one question that we get a lot is how do we secure the NDI signal? And the answer for that is called a VLAN. And if you don't know what that is, your IT guys will. And so VLAN separates the data on the network from other traffic. And it, and it uh, only allows that traffic to talk to the information that's inside that specific VLAN. So that's how you secure data with NDI. And that's just the nature of NDI as it is right now, the way that it was built. And lastly, the bird dog name. If you, if you copy this and put this in the web browser and you put dot local after it, that will pull up the bird dog mini, uh, the dashboard again. Really recommend that you don't change this because this is used in a couple of our programs and if you intend to ever download and try comms or uh, comms light you're going to need this name to kind of be this and so uh, i recommend that you don't change it you could change this i suppose to camera one or you know or maybe do something like this where it's camera one uh, that would probably be acceptable but uh, we really recommend that you just leave this as is because um, it enables some other features in the other programs. Okay, lastly, we're gonna talk about the systems tab. This is really easy. If you wanna change the default password, remember the default password is bird dog on all of our bird dog devices, but say this unit is going to be exposed to other data or other, or, um, other users on a network, um, changing the password is not a bad idea. However, you, uh, you need to remember that password. You need to make sure that multiple people know where to find that password because if you leave or something happens to you and then we need to reset this device or get into it uh, and you're the only one that knows, it's really hard to reset it. So uh, the master password, we recommend that you don't change it unless you absolutely have to, but uh, you can change it here if you need to. The system update uh, field is where you would download a firmware update and then upload the .fw file that comes in the firm firmware update file. It's a zip file, but then you unzip it, you extract the, the firmware, and then you would select and put the .fw file here, select it, and then hit update. It will remove you from this screen 
and take you to what looks like a, a Linux script and it will run a script. In previous versions of the firmware, sometimes the firmware script runs and then says, waiting to reboot, please wait. After about a minute or two, you can go ahead and refresh the screen or go to a new tab and type in the IP address again and see if it comes up, see if it's done updating. Um, previous older versions of the firmware, there was a problem where it wasn't actually rebooting the device. And so you have to do that, but we're trying to iron that out to where you don't have to worry about that. But if it ever, uh, once it says rebooting device, just open a new tab and repunch in the IP address and see if the device comes up. And if it does, log back in and get back to customizing. This config file uh, update option is for if you are needing, and this is for the network guys, if you are needing to upload the JSON file to allow this device to talk across subnets, this is where you would update that file. If you need to do that, you can contact us at help at bird-dog.tv and uh, we can help you walk through that process and what needs to happen in order for uh, that uh, you know, configuration file to look correct so that the devices will talk over subnets. Um, it's a little bit uh, deeper in the network stuff and you can contact, uh, contact us directly if you need to get into that. And then of course, multicast. We do support multicast uh, with all of our devices. It is disabled by default, but you can enable it you can put in your multicast information there and get it up and running in case you need that feature. So multicast is an option and is enabled. All right, that's all I'm gonna cover in this video. I hope it's been helpful. We're gonna talk about AV setup in other videos per device so that you can greater understand all the features that are available. But for this one, we just wanna go through dashboard, network, and system and get you guys up and running and using your new bird dog devices. Hope you're well. Reach out to us at help at bird-dog.tv if you need help, and we will see you guys in the next video. Take care.